Heck and heckety. Let me quote scholar Stephen Davis to end, which summarizes all that I've said and most of what I'll be saying in the future. Here it goes. Perhaps you are one of those remarkable people who experience an overpowering realization of the divinity of existence. You suddenly know that everything is divine and that within you lies an ocean of God. Will you know this all of the time and every day? No, you will crest and fall and submerge again into the mundane. The realization of divinity as the be-all and end-all, as the substance of your very self, that within which you live and move and have your being, does not dominate every day, although you wish it would. The ordinary world of aches and pains and approaching death, of trouble, temptation, sin, stress, and loss seems to rule almost all the time. And yet, sometimes you can seize what you seek and see glory everywhere and know yourself to be divine. My father says that almost the whole world is asleep. Everybody you know, everybody you see, everybody you talk to. He says that only a few people are awake and they live in a state of constant, total amazement. If you are one of those people, you are one of the Gnostics. You know what you truly are, that you are God, just as everyone else is. But, as a Gnostic, your existence in this ordinary and difficult world puzzles you. You ask, how did I come to be here? You don't seem to belong here. You belong in a world, a realm of divinity. And it certainly seems that the divine realm is not everyday reality. But if, in full reality, everything that exists is God, why don't we always know this? Why do some people never even think it possible to be what, in their depths, they really are? Why don't we know who we are? How did we come to forget? What holds us back from perpetual realization of our divinity? And what traps so many people in denying that their own divinity is even conceivable? These are the Gnostics' questions. What is real? How do you define real? Gnostics know that God is all and that they themselves are God. They experience this knowledge, this realization, and know that everyone else could share their experience. But they are continually thrown back into the seemingly hard material reality that tells them they are merely flawed humans, kin to apes, doomed to die, ruled by a judgmental creator God who often does not know a fondness for people at all. I'll say bone cancer in children. What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? Gnostics rebel against their churches and their priests, their Bible-based pastors, whose obsession with God's supposed desire to control behavior seems not to be what true religion is about. To Gnostics, true religion, elite spirituality, is a realization of the divinity of every person, an experience of ascent to the divine homeland. It is a knowledge of the way we once were as God and of the process by which God came to be self-forgetful as to become us, mere human beings, under the control of another lesser God. I am the architect. I created the matrix. I've been waiting for you. Gnosticism is a religion of rebels, creative thinkers whose works were systematically destroyed by Orthodox Christianity. They lived in the home of heresy, for they were the source of self-assertiveness against the Episcopal demand for sameness. They persisted in the shadows, in certain Sufi sects, in the Christian Cathar movement, and perhaps even among the Knights Templar and the Rosicrucian orders. In other words, we're talking about an underground, 
which did exist in a different way during the Dark Ages. And the purpose of this underground is to find out how to preserve the light, life, the culture, how to keep things living. Their speech resounds today in the Nag Hammadi Library, read today by spiritual seekers throughout the world. Their central message is that God fell and became us, and how, through knowing that story, we can return to glory and be absorbed again into God. In the Thomas Gospel, Jesus says, He who drinks from my mouth will become as I am, and I shall be he. Wow. And we are all to do that. To wake up to our Jesus within us, this is blasphemy in the normal way of thinking in Christianity, but it's the very essence of Gnosticism and of the Thomas Gospel. And heaven, that uh, desired goal of most people, is, is within us? All the gods, all the heavens, all the worlds are within us. <laughs> 